My name is Rachel, and I was wondering, um, which adjudicatory process do you believe would have more, have a more successful rate of deterrence against sexual assault? Wow, what a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Let's go to this side first. Take it to, uh, to uh, Jed Rubenfeld. Well, thanks for that great question. As you can guess, my answer is going to be the courts, <laughs> because it is very hard to deter people from serious crimes if you slap them on the wrist for doing it. And uh, being told to write a paper or even a suspension, that's a slap on the wrist. Now, expulsion is a serious penalty, but if you keep that a secret and it's non-transparent, that is not the way you deter sexual assault. I've got to add one little point about previous statement. The burden of proof that the government has forced us to use, us colleges to use, the uh, uh, proponents of the evidence. Look, at Yale, what's our standard of proof for a plagiarism case is clear and convincing evidence. That legally, for those of you who know, that's a standard up from preponderance of the evidence. That's what we do with all our cases. Now with rape, we're, we're forced to use a, a lower one. And I gotta say one more thing, mediation. You have to understand this goes to the work-related question before. Title IX has forced us to not do, we're, we're barred from doing mediation. What, what would grown-ups do with a, a groping allegation? Grown-ups at a school, they bring the parties in, get them to agree. You're not gonna do this anymore. You agree, right? If you break this agreement, you will be subject to penalties. They agree. That's called mediation. No, we can't do that anymore because Title IX. Jed, the, the I, I want to. I'm going to stop you because I want to keep just uh, give the other chance uh, side a chance to focus on the question that was asked, and you had moved on a little bit. So, what about the question, Michelle Anderson? Well, which, which system would actually result in more justice? I think essentially is what you meant. I actually, that's a different question than the one. Okay, Rachel so asked. if I moved, but it, that's then an let's important go, one too. Well, let's Rachel go with Rachel's asked, question. Rachel asked, which system leads to more deterrence? And deterrence, oh, deterrence, is, sorry. deterrence is one of the goals of the criminal justice system: deterrence, incapacitation, retribution. We're all criminal law professors up here, so you could, we could all talk about that. So the criminal justice system is designed to deter generally. Um, I think the 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 goal the goals of the campus adjudicatory system are very different, and I don't think they have the goal of large uh, general deterrence. I think they have the goal of individual assessment of the facts and trying to match a, a remedy that fits whatever happened. Um, and I also think that the criminal justice system wildly over uh, plays its hand, uh, uh, in its, and it's far too incarcerative and punitive um, in general, uh, which is what Stephen talked about in his uh, remarks. I think your question about which leads to more can, justice. Can I, can I save that for a few you minutes can. from now? Thank you.